Hey there Adobe fans, my name is Kara Plichnich and today I'm going to be sharing with you a super fun, quick and easy project using InDesign, Bridge and Photoshop to whip up a custom Facebook timeline cover. Now this is a great project for you or your business or what I like to do with it as a wedding photographer is I like to make one of these for each of my clients because it's a super fun surprise that I can give to them that totally makes their day. I mean they love these and it's a really great marketing tool for me at the same time. So let's get started. We're going to come up to the file menu, choose new and document, turn off facing pages and come down to the width and enter 851 pixels. Now you'll notice when I tab down to the next field that InDesign is going to convert that to inches because that is my current preference, but that's okay. I can still enter pixels for the height as well, 315 to be exact, 315 pixels and InDesign will just convert that. We'll make margin zero and click OK. All right, so here's our document. Now it would be helpful if we knew precisely where the profile picture was going to be overlaid on top of this so we can consider it when creating our design. So we're going to draw a vertical guide and drop that at 28 pixels and a horizontal guide that we'll drop at 190 pixels. Great. Now I'm going to use the rectangle frame tool and if I click instead of drag I can enter in 160 pixels by 160 pixels and this is going to represent the profile picture. So I'll drag that into position like so and I'm going to fill it with black just to make it easier to see and Facebook actually adds a white stroke around the profile picture so I'm going to add that too. And if we really want to be particular, that stroke has a weight of about four points and the stroke is aligned to the outside edge. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and now we're totally legit. One more thing I'm going to do just to make this easy to use as a template for future clients down the road is I'm going to create a new layer, so layer two here, and I'm going to move the object here, the placeholder, from layer one to layer two by just dragging this little dot and now it's on layer two and we can see that by the red frame that surrounds it now. And the advantage is that now I can just turn it on and off when I'm ready to export and I don't have to recreate it in the document every time I'm ready to make this for another client. So we'll go ahead and leave that on layer two. I'm going to switch back to layer one so that, because I want the rest of the design to appear on layer one. So let's get some frames in here. I'm going to use the rectangle frame tool and draw out a series of frames. Now I like to keep mine pretty simple, but you could do however you want, of course, but I am going to keep mine pretty simple. And I think I'm going to widen this a little bit. I love, how cool is the gap tool, right? Oh, does that make your day or what? All right, so I've got that adjusted how I want and now I'm going to align everything using the align panel. I want to distribute the spacing and I want to make one more frame down here actually like this and make sure that that's all distributed well and everything lines up nicely. All right. Now we're ready to add some images to this and the way I like to work with InDesign is I like to use regular bridge and I know we have the mini bridge panel that's been around since CS5 but you know what I am still a fan of, of regular old school bridge because it has some extra functionality and features that mini bridge doesn't have. So I like to have that open and I collapse it down into the small film strip. If you've not seen it look like that before, you're, you're probably more used to seeing it like this and you can get it into what's called compact mode by coming up to the view menu and just choosing compact mode and that collapses it down into a little film strip and you can position this, you know, however you want on your screen. But this is how I like to work and then you can just drag and drop right into your document. Now you might be wondering why am I not creating this in Photoshop because it's just one page, it's a single page document and you could do this in Photoshop but as you'll see here it, it just wouldn't be this fast, quick and easy. InDesign allows me to just drag and drop these frames these images right into the frames and they're already going to be sized correctly and it's just really a piece of cake. I don't have to mess with any of that. 
and in Photoshop, you would have to, you know, resize and um, mask and clip everything to make it work. And here you just don't have to. So I prefer to do my design work in InDesign and my photo editing in Photoshop. Now I like to save this last little frame here for some studio branding. So what I'm going to do is use the eyedropper tool to sample this fun yellow right out of my photo. And then I'm going to add some text in here just like this and style it up really quickly. Something like this. And then I'm going to use my library panel where I've conveniently stored my logo so that I can drag it in here. I don't even have to go get it. I just have it right there in the library panel. That looks pretty good. About like that. Now I like to make sure I'm getting everything where I want it by turning on what I call wonderful mode. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So the keyboard shortcut for that is W and that's why I call it wonderful mode because the keyboard shortcut's W but also because it really is just wonderful and it makes your layout look great. So now we've got the design done and we're ready to do our retouching. Now if you really want to turbocharge your retouching, you want to turbocharge your relationship between InDesign and Photoshop. And you can do that by creating your own custom keyboard shortcut from the edit menu. Choose keyboard shortcuts. From product area, you want to come down to panel menus. And we're going to be looking for the links panel. This is a keyboard shortcut that affects our links. So it's in the links panel and we want edit original. And you can type whatever you want here. I've got command period that works for me. So I'm going to click OK and then watch how easy this is. So let's say I want to retouch these two images. I'm just going to select them and then if I do my keyboard shortcut, check it out. They just pop right open in Photoshop. And now I'm going to do something that's just makes it really visual and easy for you to see. I'm just going to convert these to black and white and I'm going to save them right over themselves and you'll see why in a minute. But I'll get those converted and saved and closed. Now watch what happens when I bop back over to InDesign. Are you ready? Bam! There it is is it automatically refreshes and updates this and you know what I got to tell you as a wedding photographer I love this because not only do I like to create things like this like these Facebook timeline covers for my clients but I make every single one of my wedding clients a wedding album as well and I do that in InDesign and this makes the retouching process between InDesign and Photoshop a piece of cake. So that's great. Um, one thing I will tell you that's really important though, you got to make sure for whatever reason your links panel has to be open for that keyboard shortcut to work. It's, it's not weird. I don't know why, but <laughs> if you don't have your links panel open, you can hit your keyboard shortcut all you want and nothing will happen. So make sure you have your links panel open. All right, so this looks good. I could save it at this point to be able to use it for future clients. And let's get this guy exported. I'm going to come up to layers, turn off layer two, and we'll go to File, Export, give it a name that I can recognize. Make sure we select JPEG here for format. We want the quality to be maximum and the resolution needs to be 72. And I'm going to hit Export and there it goes. Now I'm going to pop back over to Bridge and go to the folder I've sent this to. And here it is already, that fast. So it's ready to go. I can upload this right to Facebook if I want or I can bop back into Photoshop and let's run a quick sharpen action on this and then I'll just do a quick save for web right over itself and that's it. It is sharpened and ready for Facebook. So quick and easy. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks so much for watching.